You know, we're always talking about the gap between the rich and the poor, but what does that gap actually look like? How can you take a huge, complicated idea like economic inequality and turn it into something you can not only see, but measure with one simple number? Well, that's exactly what we're going to dig into. It sounds almost impossible, right? How do you translate this feeling we have about fairness into a concrete image? But it turns out, economists came up with a surprisingly elegant tool to create a visual snapshot of how income is spread across an entire country. And that tool? It's called the Lorenz Curve. This is our starting point for taking that vague idea of inequality and giving it a real, visible shape. So what is it, really? At its heart, it's just a graph, but it's a really powerful one. All it does is line up the entire population from the poorest person to the richest and ask a pretty simple question. What percentage of the country's total income does each group actually have? So let's break down how it actually works. The magic really starts when you imagine a perfectly equal world. To do that, we draw this straight 45-degree line. This represents the ideal, where, say, 10% of the population holds exactly 10% of the income, 50% holds 50%, and so on. But of course, reality is never that neat. When we plot the actual data, a very different picture emerges, and that's what shows us the true shape of inequality. And here's where you see the crucial difference. In that ideal world, the poorest 40% of families would earn 40% of the income. Simple. But in reality, yeah, they almost always earn far, far less. This gap between the ideal straight line and the real-world data is what creates the Lorenz curve. It's that visible sag away from perfect equality. And really, that's the whole ballgame right there. The size of that gap, that belly, between the ideal line and the real curve gives us a direct visual for how much inequality there is. The deeper the sag, the more unequal to society. It's inequality you can literally see. Okay, so a picture is great, right? But it's still a picture. How do you compare one country's sag to another's or track your own country over time? We need a way to move from this visual to a single comparable number. So how do we do that? How do you actually quantify that visual gap? To really compare different places or different times, we've got to turn that picture into one single hard number. So you see a number like this, 0 0.345. What on earth does that mean? It might just look like some random decimal, but believe it or not, that is the answer. It's a precise score for inequality. And that number has a name, the Gini coefficient. It's really just a clever bit of math that measures the area of that gap we saw in the Lorenz curve and boils it down to a number between zero and one. It literally turns the picture into a precise score. And the beauty of this is how simple the scale is. A Gini score of zero, that's perfect equality. The Lorenz curve is sitting right on top of that perfect 45 degree line. A score of one, well, that's perfect inequality. We're talking one person has all the income and everybody else has absolutely zero. Every country in the real world falls somewhere in between. But here's where it gets really interesting. These curves and these scores, they aren't just facts of nature. They're not set in stone. They are the direct result of the choices we make, which means they can actually be changed. It's government actions, especially things like taxes and social benefits, that are the main levers we have to physically change the shape of that curve. They can push it closer to that line of equality and, in turn, lower the Gini score. So, for example, a progressive tax system, you know, where higher earners pay a larger percentage of their income, that actively shrinks the gap and decreases inequality. Same thing with a fixed grant given to every family. But what's really fascinating is that a proportional flat tax, where everyone pays the exact same percentage, doesn't change the Gini score one bit. The relative gap stays exactly the same. So, let's take a step back. We've gone on a bit of a journey here, right? We started with this big, fuzzy feeling about inequality. We turned it into a picture with the Lorenz curve, and then we quantified that picture with the Gini coefficient. What we've done is we've basically demystified the whole thing. We've gone from a vague feeling about a gap to a sharp picture and a single, precise number. Now we can see it, we can measure it, and we can even track how different policies change it. But, you know, measuring something is just the first step. These tools are amazing. They tell us what the level of inequality is with incredible clarity. What they can't tell us is what it should be. And that leaves us with the really big question, doesn't it? What is the right level of inequality for a society? What Gini score should we be aiming for? Now that is something we're thinking about.